That's right, black bear. Black bear, wild black bear. And this is Surefire Wednesdays. Thank you for joining us tonight. We've had such an incredible week and we're so excited to be coming to you live with this fantastic recipe. And this recipe was actually inspired by one of our viewers. And that's what we want. Surefire Wednesdays is all about you, all about cooking wild game. And as professional chefs, just using some practical applications, techniques that we use time and again in the restaurant, in professional atmosphere and environments, we want to bring it home to you. So what we've got here is some beautiful black bear. Yeah, beautiful black bear that we uh, actually took this week. It was Dakota's black bear. It was an awesome experience. What I have here is some ground black bear and also some pork shoulder. Now it's a very inexpensive cut of meat, but it's also really good to in, intertwine both of them. Yep. It really helps the meat out quite a bit by adding some more fat. Pull that off. I've never actually tried bear fat, but apparently you're not supposed to use it. We kind of took that, but we definitely kept some from our bear because we want to boil it down and try it. Render it, right? Yeah. That's the key. Rendering it helps to purify it a little bit, gets rid of the junk, and uh, welcome, Dakota. So my name is Jonathan Collins, and my oldest son, Dakota. Good evening, everybody. And my youngest son, Bailey. And uh, so it's, again, it's a real privilege. Now, there's a couple things we don't want you to miss tonight. Yeah. We got to go through quickly because Excalibur is planning on blowing up some crossbows. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dan Wallace is doing some crazy stuff tonight. He's going to be, that's right, blowing up an Excalibur crossbow and dropping it from a helicopter. But there's one thing we want to, <laughs> now grab that cooler. We promised we would give away one of these coolers, and you know how coveted these coolers are. We've got this brilliant grizzly cooler. Now we're gonna, if, what I need you to do is I need you to like this uh, broadcast, share it, tag a friend, and tell us why this cooler should be your cooler. We've we're even, giving this cooler away. We've even gone ahead and branded it for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we can be everywhere with you. Yeah. <laughs> They came in handy at bear camp, that's for sure. We, oh, got, we got a little low on water halfway through, so we just drank some of the ice water that was in the yeah. bottle. So well, I got to uh, keep, in order to get everything done before yeah, yeah, yeah. Excalibur takes it to that crossbow, we got to get going on the cooking. Yep. So like Bailey said, the first thing he did is he took that pork shoulder, ground it up. He actually yep. ran it through twice, and then the black bear, that meat, which is much softer, yep. we were able to put it through just once. And yep. look at that beautiful texture. And I got to, uh, I'm going to saute this up as soon as the pan gets nice and hot. It's always important to have your pan nice and hot before you put the meat in. And once that meat is in and it starts to saute, the one thing I want to make sure to do is just leave it alone. You don't, one thing you want to do, you want to be stirring in, playing with it. You don't want to do that. You just want to leave it alone and let it sear in the bottom of the pan. So I just wanted to give you guys a look at the different coloration here. Now this is part of the bear. This is off uh, roast off the back leg. And look at, this is the pork shoulder here. And this is the bare hind leg. Look at the color there. You can see a little bit of marbling through it, but very low. We trimmed most of the fat off the bear. Beautiful. So Bailey's got a job. He's going to start sauteing that. Now it's really important if you've got a lot of meat, make sure to saute in batches because what you want to do is you want to get rid of the moisture, but at the same time, the reason we don't just throw, throw this meat into the tomatoes and everything else, we want to develop flavor at every step. Now, one of the things everybody's been talking about with black bear is trichinosis. Yeah, trichinosis. So, this is what I said to the boys. Have you ever, imagine this, you're really hungry, you walk into the kitchen, you're like, mm. I reach into the uh, kitchen, into the refrigerator, I grab a big old chicken breast, and I just take a bite off it. Salmonella. So you never do that, right? So, let's not be paranoid about it. Let's face it, the beef and chicken, all kinds of things that we cook need to be cooked past a certain temperature. Yep. And that temperature in this case, 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Start, yeah. start putting it in. Divide it in batches. Tongs are there. And what starts to happen if you don't do it in batches, you actually begin to boil the meat. Yeah. So you want that uh, vapor, all that moisture to escape, yep. but at the same time you want to develop flavor. So he's putting it in the pan. We're going to give you a little shot of that in a little bit. But that's going to be going in. Looks like we're going to give you a shot of it right now. So he's putting it in the pan. And like Bailey said, the most important thing is to make sure that pan is hot. You want it screaming hot so we can develop all kinds of flavors. And get some salt and pepper on that, Bailey. Yep, get some salt. So this is a great time to add seasoning because that salt will pull the moisture out. And at the same time, you wanna make sure every single time 
that you season in layers. Whenever you're building any dish, and in this case, the bolognese, when, you, when you're layering that dish, season every layer. So why bolognese? Well, a little town of Bologna, a little, little region in, uh, in Italy has made this sauce famous. And what makes it so great is its simplicity. So Dakota's going to get started on uh, a sofrito in, yep. in Italian or in French, the uh, mirepoix. mirepoix. We've been talking about it again and again, and this is the flavor base. Yeah, so in places, we've replaced some of the ingredients, so we're going to use yep. some fresh thyme instead of fresh parsley, just our own little take on it. Yeah, and then, so what he's doing is he's peeling the ribs off the celery. Now, uh, he's going to peel the celery as well. The celery has a really stringy outside. It's nice to peel that off, trim it, and get it all cut up. Make sure it's uniform size and shape, and then that way it'll all cook at the same rate. How's that coming? Good. Looks pretty uh, good. Another uh, good little tip is a lot of people tend to throw out the inner part of the celery that looks like just a bunch of leaves. But that is... The celery is, heart. Yeah. But one thing that's also good for is if you're making dinner and say you're making a salad, if you cut that up and toss it into the salad, that's actually where most of the flavor is in the Tons salad. Tons of flavor. Tastes amazing. Yeah, great point. So what I've got, I've got some regular slab bacon. Now, you could use pancetta, but uh, just regular thick cut slab bacon, smoky if you want. But we're going to get a lot of flavors going here. Now, the black bear in that, that hind quarter, that roast from the back, is going to be full flavor. So bear, like beef, carries lots of flavor. So we want to make sure that we've got flavors that will stand up to it and not shy away. So that's why we can add some of this beautiful pork. So Bay, I'm going to give you that, and you can put that in uh, in the next batch okay. and just saute that up. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want, have you ever made fresh pasta? Fresh pasta, guys, you know how many ingredients you need to make fresh pasta? Two. Two, that's it. <laughs> you need eggs and you need flour. That's all you need. I want to show you how to make a batch and we're going to do it right now. You want to take a break on that? Okay. I'm getting tired. Anyway. Yeah, good. So if you, now you don't have to have a food processor, but the food processor will make the job extremely easy. So I've got some beautiful farm fresh eggs here. And all I'm going to do, and this is a really good rule of thumb for you. So you can take, and for every cup, which is about 150 grams of flour, uh, you need a one egg per 100 grams. So, and 100 grams per person is perfect for a, a serving size. So I've got two cups in there. Let's do, we'll do, uh, we'll do a four cup measure. So four cups of all-purpose flour. You can use a durum flour or semolina. Um, they all have different textures, but you know what? I love using just straight all-purpose because it's so simple. It's something that you'll have around the house, and you can make it. Once you see how easy this is, you'll do this, So, and the texture. Because it's so simple, you'll do this all the time. And so as I'm sure as all of you know, farm fresh eggs is just going to make it that much better. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, definitely. So I've got some beautiful eggs going in. Now, one of, the things, one of the things that I always do is I put a little bit of olive oil in it as well. Gives it great texture. So there's six. And these are uh, large eggs, or a little bit like, kind of like medium eggs. So I'm going to put a couple of extra eggs in there. And just a nice glug of extra virgin olive oil. Look at that, looks beautiful already. And then what we'll do, put the lid on, and the pulse feature is what you want to use here. Because it's going to throw the ingredients up, and as they come back down, it's going to mix together really nicely. Once I do this, you're going to see the texture. Bay, I'm going to get you to grab the one that I put in the fridge earlier. Look at that. So you can see it's about a dozen pulses. And let's have a look at the texture. Oh, it's perfect. So what we're looking for here is something that, this is what we would describe as something that looks pea-like. So like little uh, peas in there. And when you press it together, you notice it comes together and it'll form a beautiful, beautiful. Actually, you know what, babe? I think we're going to roll with this one. This is, normally you let it, uh, you know what, actually, let's, let's use the rest of dough. But look at that beautiful texture. That is what you're looking for every single time. Yeah, so put a little flour on the board. This one's a little, uh, it's, I put an extra egg in this one, so it's a little uh, more moist. So you can see here, if you get this, this is actually a really good uh, uh, problem-solving thing here. 
if you've got a dough that's a little bit too wet, so this literally just has one egg too many in it. So I'm just pulling off that uh, plastic wrap. Just simply take some flour and just put that on top just so you can handle it. So we just turn it over once, a little bit of flour. But if you want to put that rolling unit in there. Yep. So one of the great things about doing your own pasta is you can, of course, do whatever kind of pasta that you want. We're going to do fettuccine tonight because it's a nice wide noodle. It'll carry the sauce beautifully. But if you want, you can roll this out with a rolling pin. You don't have to have a machine. You can roll it out with a rolling pin, gently fold it over, and you can make it as thick or as thin as you'd like. This is just beautiful. So that texture, that's what we're looking yeah, for right there. What's, that's beautiful. What thing. setting do you want around? So we're going to start on zero. So we'll start. So that code, that's coming up nice, eh? Oh, yeah. Code, let's, let's give uh, the viewers a quick look at this. This looks okay. really good. Base. So as he comes up, just turn it over to show how we're browning. Yep. And then fish it out and show how we're going to do that in batches. It's cool. You can also see the difference between the pork meat and the bear meat as well. Yep. You can see here that the, the bear meat's actually a little darker even so that it's been cooked. So that's perfect, that's what you want. Now at this stage, see Bailey's got this, uh, you can use any kind of a strainer. He's just gonna fish the majority of it out, put it in a bowl, and just reserve that. And it's important when we're building the layers. Now Coach, while I've got you off, let's have a look at this. We have this, this one portion. So I'm literally gonna divide it by four. Look at the texture of that beautiful dough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm literally gonna just kind of form this. I'm going to make sure that it's not too moist because I want to be able to, the machine to do a beautiful job of uh, rolling this out for me. And then all you have to do is literally, I'm just going to put a little bit of flour in there. This is a great thing to do with the kids too, I'll tell you. This is, uh, this is a lot of fun. The bay's got it on, there we go. We had it, we had it set just a little tight, there we go. How's the, uh, how's the audio on that, Code? Is that good? Yeah. Pretty good. So you, yeah, put the bacon in with that batch. You can see what's starting to happen is that beautiful dough is kneading. I just turn it over a couple times like this. And if it's a little bit moist to the touch, just simply add a little bit of flour as you go. And look at this spectacular pasta. See that, the way that's catching there? That means it's just a little on the damp side. So we're just going to add a bit more flour. It's great. I, as long as you don't have to clean up this. I'm glad, I'm really glad we have a clean up too. There we go. Look at that beautiful dough coming through here. So turn it over. You notice I turn it over and then go the opposite direction. Tuck that in. Beautiful. How's that coming along back there, Bay? Good. We got another batch starting to go there, and we got this one all done. Well, this is the second batch, and we've already done the one the dad said to incorporate the bacon. Why did you incorporate the bacon in? So the bacon we want to saute to develop flavor. Okay. So you can see what we're what we've got here is that. Each time we pass it through, I'm dialing it for a little more pressure, and each time it passes through, it uh, it gets just a little bit thinner. Look at that beautiful texture, babe. That's awesome. You can see the beautiful color of that dough because it's egg based, because we've got some beautiful olive oil in there, and we're just going to keep working on this until we get it down to. So we've got about that length. So when you get it about halfway done, get it to a manageable size. Otherwise, you'll look like, what was that Disney movie, Lady in the Tramp? Got like a 19 foot long uh, pasta noodle. Which if you're on a date, I suppose can help you. There we go. Can I do this one? Yep, go for it. Run it through. Yep, just got to catch. As soon as it catches, go. Got it? There you go. And just in the center. Nice. 
So for the fettuccine, we can keep going and getting it just absolutely wafer thin. But you can see that beautiful texture. Have a look at that coat. That beautiful texture. It's very supple. And the thing that you'll find that's so different about fresh pasta is it takes a fraction of the time to be able to cook it. So now I'm going to take this out and we're going to start with, uh, with some of the uh, fettuccine noodles. So come on in here, Code. We'll show this one while we're at it as well. The nice thing about these heads, it heads is it really allows you to make lots of uh, pasta and make it really fast. So watch this. So, Bay, when you get it to this, this length the way that you did, what I do is I take that and I slice that again so that, is, so, so that it's manageable length. Yep. And then go ahead and turn that on. Just turn it right up. And then simply run it through. And you have this gorgeous pasta. Look at that, eh? So this is so beautiful. Now that is still quite uh, damp. So what I always do is I take flour, put it on top, and then literally what you create is a little pasta nest. And just tuck that aside. And then you can do the same thing again, babe, with, uh, with another one. Now I want to show you at home, if you don't have a pasta cutter, I don't want you to feel like you have to have it before you do that one, babe. Yep. I want to show you a little technique here. So get those all separated and get some uh, flour on them. Man, the kitchen's hot. Uh, you can really tell it's summertime. Going. Woo! Sun's coming in. Yep. When we started doing Surefire Wednesdays, it was dark at 5 o'clock, yep. so we had to work on lighting in here so you could even see us. Okay, so what you do is you literally take that beautiful rolled out pasta and you just come back and forth and back and forth. And now we're going to do a cut called the taglatelli. And so this is just an even broader cut. So you just take the edges, take those away, and then something about an inch in thickness. And I'm telling you right now, especially for me, doing something like a bear pasta, yeah. this is what you want. This is rustic, this is big, this is thick, and this to me is a bear-sized pasta. Well, it's a hearty meal too, right, with bear, and it's almost like a stick-to-your-ribs kind of meal, where it's almost like oatmeal or pasta, and something that's really just going to fill you up. Beautiful. Okay, good. So we got fresh pasta down. So if you're just joining us, we're doing wild black bear bolognese with fresh pasta. Babe, check out your uh, your bolognese base back here. Dakota, you better get back to work here. Put it back. Put the camera back. So a um, couple things that we want to say to uh, to everybody, uh, just as a reminder, how much we appreciate you watching, how much we appreciate your feedback, and. Keep in mind that if you really are enjoying Surefire Wednesdays or frankly any of the programs that are available on this Botech network, you can get notifications by having by text texting watch in the United States to 313131 31 or in Canada to 393939. 39. Those texts are really helpful and they keep us in touch with you because let me tell you something, when it comes to the outdoors. You want to know what's going on, and we want to be able to share with you. So, we've done a whole bunch of cooking, and this is good because we didn't want to miss. What's our time like? Oh, we're doing great. Now we can talk bear camp. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, it was pretty cool. We went up. We were about five hours north of where we are right now. We, we had to travel that far to get up into bear country, actually. And so, Ontario black bears are thriving. There's about 75 to 100,000 bears in the province, which is just... I mean, incredible. They've actually boomed so much that they've reintroduced our spring black bear hunt. Yeah. Yeah. So we only had fall black bear hunts, but because the population is doing so well, they've actually reintroduced the spring black bear hunt. Well, and that's really important to know. You know, um, I know everybody feels the pressure of of, uh, of hunting for you know uh, on public lands, uh, and yeah. our spaces as hunters are being challenged, let's just say. One of the things that you need to know about black bears is their numbers are increasing. They're increasing every single year. So even though there's hunters out there harvesting them uh, through conservation, keeping an eye on the population, we're the eyes and the ears of, of these animals. Yep, yep. And we, t we talk about, you know, we feed back information where they were harvested, yep. how old they were. 
Was there any issues with what we found, you know? We find out if there's diseased bears. If there's anything going on in that world, we know about it. And that's one of the things that we got to share with the people who don't know. Like a bolognese sauce makes bear very palatable yep. with a little bit of bacon, a little bit of pork. This is the reason why we want to share this recipe because, you know, you want to be able to share the food. You've worked so hard. You've been out there. You've done, you've done the scouting. You've done the hard work. Maybe you've had the privilege yep. of a spot in stock. And now you want to be able to share it with your friends, your family, and you want to do it in a way that makes it very palatable to them. Yeah, yeah. And that's uh, perfect. Yeah, that's good. Yep. And just to tie into what Dan Wallace is doing tonight with the Excalibur crossbow, after Dakota took his black bear, it was my turn. And uh, we sat for one night and nothing came out, but uh, on the way back it just started to rain. And we were set up in a blind on top of a nice sheet of Canadian shield, and it got a little slippery. Which is just bedrock. Yep. <laughs> and I had uh, the crossbow over my back and I was walking and walking and walking, and as my family would say, I squashed it a little bit, and I slipped. And full 200 pounds landed straight on my back, on the scope, on the limbs, everything. And all you heard was like, oh, I hope that, no. I thought and, for sure it was yeah. close. <laughs> and then I got up the next morning, I, was, I stood at 20 yards, and I was like, I just want to make sure, just in case, and dead center. And I was like, ow. So that's ready to be fished out. We're going to leave the heat on there. Now, one of the things I want to do, I want to get, we want to get that flavor. The reason we're sautéing is there's all kinds of uh, flavor that's developed on the inside of that pan. They start fishing that out, Code. I'm going to grab the camera. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah, question. Um, Michael wants to know, do you have a cookbook? Cookbook's coming out in early 2018. Thanks for asking. Look at that gorgeous, gorgeous uh, vegetables. Where'd you That's guys put amazing. my tool? I have a tool. You, tell, you come <laughs> no. in my space and you take my tool. So you can see here that I'm just doing a simple paysan cut. You can see that the... It's important that all your cuts are the exact same width, you can see there, so that they cook all to the same rate. Now I'm doing carrot, celery, and now I'm going to do some onion here. And I'll show you a little trick here with the onion to get a finer dice. You just take both root tips off, slice it in half, peel that first outer layer off. And then what you're going to do is lay it down like this and you're going to make little slits. And the wider you make your slits, the bigger the dice will be, and the thinner the slits, the thinner it'll be. So you just run it all the way down. And then this is a little bit of a thicker onion, so I'm going to do two passes here. And so what you're going to do is, you see here, I'm just going to run this knife just like this. Right through. One, two. Now, Code, I'm going to hold you up yep. there. Grab your veggies and bring them over here. So you can see all that flavor. Talk, let's talk about that flavor in the pan there. Oh yeah, see this right here, all we're going to do is deglaze this and what this is going to turn into is an automatic gravy right now, away. Get, that, get those veggies yeah. in there. No deglazing yet. We're going to saute, get those veggies in there. Now when that, humi when that moisture starts to come out of those veggies, it's going to pick up all that flavor, but it's really important for that to be uh, sauteed to golden brown. Okay, so I'm going to show you this here. So you saw what we did, it creates this and as soon as you slice it, what you're left with, look at that. Each time, the perfect amount, same size, all the way through. Beautiful. And then all you want to do is that little root there that we left on at the end to hold it all together. That part you just don't want to cut up. Take it out, put it in with your scraps. Good, so we've got a really nice flavor base going here. Now, last summer we had the time to put to, man, that smells good. Eh? You can really that. smell the bear. My God, that smells good. Uh, we had the time to uh, can some plum tomatoes. Uh, grab the dice there, babe. But if you don't, all you need is a couple cans of crushed tomatoes. Let me tell you something about crushed tomatoes. Canned foods generally, I'm not a big fan of. But some things, there's literally no no loss in terms of flavor. What would be worse? These tomatoes are hothouse. They're not a, there's not a ton of flavor, even though they're fresh. You can get them in season. They're sun ripened and flavorful. Man, use them. But if you don't, keep in mind, many of these tomatoes that are canned, they're canned in Italy in a lot of cases. You're getting a ton. You're getting Mediterranean sun. These will be just fine. So how those are coming along? Nice. So this is really turning. This is going to be a beautiful sauce. 
Now keep in mind, you know, if you're watching this and let's say you have a vegetarian in the home, you know, this is something you can do without the meat. It's yep. no problem. What I would do is I would do two separate sides. And hey, meat eaters, let's respect the non-meat eaters, okay? Uh, and, you know, one of the things I also, you know, what when you take a bear yep. or, or, or a deer or an elk, you're all, you always have so much meat. Oh, yeah. So, I, you know, I have a big family. I've got five kids, two grandkids, in-laws, outlaws, you name, you know what I'm saying, right? There's a lot of people. Uh, what you have to do is when you're do, making a mess that's this big, why not make two or three batches? Make a bunch of it. Absolutely. And typically, you know, when you cut it up in your freezer, I know us, we leave big old roasts when yeah. we pack it up. Right? Well, they, they, they'll last longer frozen. Yeah. Keep in mind, when you grind it, it, it makes it easy to handle, but ground beef or ground, let's say in this case, ground bear will bear, not yeah. last as long as a black oh, bear roast. Yeah. So let's talk very quickly. So we have that giveaway. We're yeah. not gonna, gonna give it away during the broadcast. Grab yeah. that. So we've got this brilliant grizzly cooler. Now listen, I can tell you right now, we put ice in our grizzly and we had bear in, uh, in camp Butchered, we butchered them in camp, yeah. and uh, it kept the ice, kept everything cool. We love these. We're going to give this away. So you got to like this broadcast, share this broadcast, tag a buddy, tag a friend, yep. and uh, we'll be giving it away live tomorrow at noon, uh, Eastern Standard Time. We'll, we will uh, uh, announce the winner, yep. and uh, I hope it's you right there, <laughs> right there on your couch. I hope it's you. Uh, and so and it's a it's a privilege for us to work with uh, with Grizzly as well. Yeah, and like you said, like they worked incredible. We were up there for a week. We took the bear on the second day and held that bear the entire time we were up there. It was incredible. Yeah. Listen, I want you to see how quick this fresh pasta uh, cooks. This yep. is really important. You can't know it without we're going to do it in real time. So the first thing I'm going to do, I haven't put any seasoning in this water. Now you'll notice a lot of times if you watch Surefire Wednesdays or The Outdoor Chef, we're using a, uh, a um, help me out here, a coarse salt. Yep. Uh, it's a sea salt. You're always getting a lot of flavor that way. Watch how much I'm going to put in this pan. I'm going to put one, two, three. Look at that. Look at the, what, how it behaves. So first things first, what happens is when I season the water, that is going to season the pasta that I put in there. So I want that to be, I'm going to turn that on high on my uh, range, and I want that to be a full rolling boil. There's a reason why I want a full rolling boil, and that's because those bubbles do me a great service. They're moving the pasta around so it doesn't stick. And when you've got fresh pasta in particular, like this beautiful pasta, you don't want it to stick. So we've got a rolling boil there, Code. You can always test it, and literally I'm just going to rain this down inside. And then all I'm going to do, I'm just literally, I'm just going to give it a quick stir. And all that's going to do is just help me. Now, Code, I want you to stay on that. The way that you know this is done is it begins to float. Now, you wouldn't believe it, but that is almost on its way to being cooked. And that's the one great thing about fresh pasta. Its texture is different than dry pasta. Nothing against dry pasta. I love it. But let's face it, the next time you run out of pasta, I want you to grab... A little bit of flour and some eggs. Remember, 100 grams per egg, or about a cup and a half for one and a half uh, eggs. We will have this recipe with the finished dish. How are we doing for time? Man, uh, Excalibur Destruction's coming. Uh, Bay, tell them about it one more time. So the Excalibur Destruction, uh, Dan Wallace is not only going to drop an Excal from a helicopter, but he's going to blow one up. I, I wish I'm not they could sure come by. Do I don't know. <laughs> and, he, and, and then Dan Wallace is going to drop from a rope right in the backyard. Yeah. But I know that they're giving away some excals too, so you yeah, don't want to miss that. More than one too. More than one. Okay, one thing Cole, he said let's is show make it work for him. Yep, that's right. You're going to have to work for it. So look at this. Have you ever had pasta that looks like that? Look at the texture. And literally, all I'm going to do is I'll literally take a little bit of this. And you know what, Coach? Hang tight there. I want to show you a technique at home. What you have to do if you want to get really, really nice coating on your pasta is you take a bowl and not touch the pan. That was hot. Yeah. Wait, we deglaze there? Ready to deglaze. Let's hit that bay with a little bit of uh, red wine. So we're going to put about a couple cups in there. And while he's doing that, just hit that. Yep, that's awesome. 
There we go, lots. More, 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 more. Good, nice. Now give that a good stir. Now what he wants to do is get all those crispy bits, everything off the side, Ooh. everything off the bottom. Oh, it smells incredible. And you want to saute that, get it all. And you want to saute, ah. I know it is. Come on, man. Get in there. there I up. turn it down. <laughs> okay, so I got to do this. So a little bit of olive oil in the pan, okay? Now what you want to do is take your tongs and in the pasta goes, and go ahead and leave a little bit of that water on it as you do. And what happens is you get a tiny bit of an emulsion, which sticks right to that beautiful pasta. Look at the color. I just, you know what, honestly, you wonder what I, why I get revved up about cooking. This is why. So when you do this, then a toss, and a toss, and a toss, and a toss, and then on the plate. Oh my gosh, you should smell this. I wish you could smell it. It smells amazing, it looks amazing, and oh man, it just needs a little bit of black bear bolognese and it'll be perfect. Bring them here for a second, Cole. I just want to show them this. If you, if, I don't know if you saw the pan before, but before we had all kinds of brown and red stuff all gained on here. And you can see that it's completely gone, and not only that, but look at the mirepoix. You see how it's changed color and it looks like it's almost coated and everything? Yeah. That is the taste of the red wine. So every time you take a sip of red wine and what you're tasting, that's now in the food and on everything. So now let's get that meat in there. That meat can go right in there. Don't miss a single piece of it. Meat's in. Okay, and then I've got, this is, this is a brilliant key here. Got some fresh bay leaves. Fresh bay leaves going in. Bay, I want you to strip in some of this fresh thyme. Okay. Strip in a little bit of that, talk about thyme a little bit. Yeah. And uh, we've said it before in our uh, Surefire Wednesdays, but uh, this is thyme. And uh, the easiest way to get thyme off the stem is to grab the top and go against the grain and just pinch. And as you pull down, all the thyme leaves come off and you can just sprinkle them right into whatever you're cooking. Now what I've got here is I, you can use vegetable stock, chicken stock, or even beef stock. I've got a little bit of chicken stock. And you know what, uh, I'll give you a little bit, little hint. Whenever you're making a really good sauce, in a professional kitchen we always have cheaters. And the sauce, or the, the chicken stock, the beef stock, the veg stock, it's the easiest way to add flavor and make something that's really good exceptional. So what happens is, in the end, it reduces and there's all kinds of flavor in there, not a lot of liquid, but it's that little thing that's hidden in there that gives you a real great element of flavor. Could you use uh, turkey stock? Turkey stock, whatever you've got. Whatever you've got. You've got turkey stock, you can use it. Let's go in with these uh, beautiful tomatoes. So you can see, now this is going to be uh, a beautiful... Uh, Ending here, look at this. Okay, give that a give that a stir. Incorporate all of that for me, Bay. It smells just amazing. It's uh, very different from when you like do lean ground beef or something like that. The bears, even the smell smells different. It well, smells that's better, nice. To be honest. So, and my last uh, my last kind of cheater is, and this is something that you can find. Uh, all the stores have it. It's just a pureed tomato sauce. And uh, this, as you can see, that's beautiful. It's, it's actually, again, it's done in Italy. So when you add this, the richness of this just makes the sauce just spectacular. Give that a good stir, eh? yeah, Another good thing is if you get a nice large cast iron pot like this, it's a lot easier to do stuff like this because you have one giant pot where you can not only saute the beef, but then you can do your vegetables and then just throw everything right in to cook all in one pot. Makes cleanup easy and cooking easy. So I think we've got the lion's share of our cooking done. So let's talk a bit more about Bear Camp. Right now we want to open up the discussion and the forum for how we were successful. What we did in order to get our bear and, and what made it for us. Remember, you know, we are professional chefs, but we are new hunters. Yeah. This is the making of the hunter. If you're just joining us, the outdoor chef is, is really all about cooking. Yeah. But, you know, for us, these are all new experiences. Yes, Megan? Uh, we have Wayne from Arlington, Texas, and it looks incredible. Dustin says you need more pasta. More pasta, <laughs> yes, Dustin. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Well, again, thank you for watching. We appreciate it. Thank you for your comments. But right now, let's yeah. talk bear. Because I'll tell you, first of all, last year we went bear hunting in the fall yep. and we got skunked. 
And we, were, uh, we went out a little too late. We were uh, actually up near Thunder Bay, which is way, way, way up in northern Ontario. And actually, down here, the bears were still out as to where we were hunting this spring. But up there, they were. It's, the season is so progressed that they were already. They were asleep. Yeah. So uh, you <laughs> that's, know, hey, that's not true. We saw a bear the day after season. The closed. day after yeah, season we closed. We did. So the thing about uh, hunting bears uh, here in Ontario compared to maybe some places like out west, yeah, or maybe, maybe where you hunt, is a spot and stock here is almost it's impossible. impossible. I mean, it's, it's so dense. Yeah. The wood, the the forest is so yeah. dense. Yeah. Uh, so we we use bait barrels, yeah. and, and we do what's called we call it bear brulee. Okay, so you know <laughs> uh, we we at least make it entertaining for them. Uh, what we did is we took a couple rocks. And then we took those disposable pie aluminum pans. pie pans. And then, yeah, yeah, what you do is you lay some bacon out in the pie pan. Yeah. And then you take some vanilla or honey or maple syrup, whatever your poison is, put that in on the bacon. And what we do is add a few marshmallows in there. And then you put a little Bunsen burner underneath it, making sure to clear out some dirt so you're on dirt. We were on rock, so there was no you know, hazard to starting a forest fire or anything like that. Salt and, then, and pepper going in, just so you know. <laughs> And then you just put that Bunsen burner, you know, the ones that you just light up right underneath it. They're and what it does for catering. Eh? You, yeah, yeah, they're not Bunsen burners from chemistry class. Oh, okay. Uh, they're, they're the little sternos. They're sternos. called sternos. Yeah. They're great because you, you can hardly blow the things yeah. out. Well, I felt like I was doing a science project out there. And now what it starts to do is start to cook amazing. that bacon, and then you're sitting over there and you're blind, you're treating, and you're like, woo! That smells oh, yeah. good, man. And let me tell you something. If you can smell it, the bears oh, yeah, can, smell can smell it. Smell it. Oh, they yeah. can smell up to, you know, five. Their scent is about three to four times stronger than a dog scent. Than a dog so that, scent. So that's very, that's strong. But, you know, we also had the privileges, and this is something I really recommend to those of you out there who are new hunters and possibly have had some frustration. Yep. We got the ear of a third generation trapper, yep. a guy who I'm proud to call a friend, Paul yep. Gerard, uh, and he is with uh, Magnet Outfitters. Yep. Um, so he was actually, even though we weren't, we were on public lands, but he was the guy, basically, if I... I said to him, you know what your, your motto should be? Shut up and listen to me, and yeah. maybe you might get something. <laughs> it's so true. You know, we watch shows. Yes. We think we know how to do it. Yes. The most important thing is your scent, yep. your movement, yep. and then making sure you scout. Yes, Megan. Um, Brad is asking, did you use the fat off the bear, or did you remove it before using it? So we removed all the fat. We had heard many things about the fat. Yep. In particular, like you notice what we uh, prepared today, it didn't have any fat on it. We trimmed all that off. And then what we did is we put it yep. over the campfire. And we yep. rendered it down. That's yep. one thing we made sure to do, though. We didn't get rid of the fat. We kept it and rendered it or something so we could try it. Well, we've heard a lot of stories about the fat and everything, yeah. and wanted to be able to come from a standpoint of we've tried it and kind of get our own opinion about it. I treated it just like duck fat. So duck fat, when removed yeah. or when you cook with it, you just simply render it. You bring it up to about 170 degrees. You purify it by doing that, and then you strain it off to clean out any of the impurities, and then we immediately froze it. So I'm look personally, I'm gonna do eggs this Saturday morning <laughs> in bear fat, and then I'll yep. let you know. Yep. So uh, let's talk a bit more about how. So uh, scouting was a big thing. Yeah, scouting, and I mean, wherever you go, especially if you're going to public land that's maybe not around you, you know. One of the biggest things, like he was talking about, Paul, is we talk to the locals. We don't live up there. We live five hours away, so yeah. we have no idea what's going on that very season. The whole season, the way the bears are acting could have changed in the last five days from the last time we talked to them. So when you get where you're going, make sure you talk to the locals. They may be a little, you know, not willing to tell you stuff, but try and find out as much as you can. Yeah. And if you can get a friend like talk we have, to people. then what, yeah. that friend will tell you everything. And that's what he did is... He didn't guide us, but he just told us basically, since we're new hunters, sit down, shut up, <laughs> and uh, be quiet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, and then, and then of course the other thing is, uh, if you if you haven't before, and if you have, you can you know this. Uh, when it's time to bring the bear out of the woods, yep. be prepared. Yeah. Uh, Get ready to go. They're heavy. Uh, what we did is we made sure back at camp you don't harvest a bear, or for that matter, matter, a deer or anything else, and then prepare your butchery. Yep. You want to make sure everything is set. 
We had, there's a lot of flies up there, a lot of mosquitoes, so we had a screened in tent. We had a, of the year. Yeah, we had a table. We had the tools. Yeah. So that when it's ready, we, we, we can gut it. Yeah. We hung the bear, which yeah. I highly recommend. Oh yeah, hanging it, what it does is it just drains the bear so much so that yeah. when we went to butcher it, yeah. it was effortless, it was a pleasure. So, so clean, no yeah. blood anywhere, it was awesome. So, side note, if you're going to hang the bear, make sure you got a shotgun to protect yourself from the wolves. Yeah, there's a lot of wolves. <laughs> uh, but uh, but the, the thing to keep in mind is for food safety, make sure that it's, you know, in our case, yeah. it's four degrees or below. Yeah. It's a nice, cool night. Hung the bear high in the tree, used our trusty Honda to pull him up in the tree. Yep, yep. Uh, and it was something that worked brilliantly for us. Um, the uh, Let's talk a little bit about the absolute awe. I'm going to take a question, Megan. Um, so John seems to want to know, wants to know what's going to be in the cookbook, but Brian is asking what kind of blades stay sharper longer when you skin the bear? Oh, fantastic. So, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. We so, actually came across that issue a lot because we had a couple different blades at bear camp that we had in our knife roll, and one worked better than most. Yeah, so what I used to skin out the bear was a Groman skinning knife, stainless steel blade. The edge on the stainless steel stays longer, doesn't dull as fast. Yeah, it's a little bit harder to sharpen, small, but that hard edge hard. lasts a lot longer. And then after that, what we use is a uh, boning knife. So yeah. a boning knife, you can see it's a lot like a fillet knife. Oh, that's that's, a, knife. that's a, That was a fillet knife. You can see they're almost the same thing. Lots of bend in it. And what that does is, as you say, for example, come into a knuckle, you can press that in and guide it a lot along that knuckle, get it off, and then especially when you're trimming off all the fat or, or uh, connective tissue, just slide it. You can go like this, bend it, point it upwards, and peel it right off. So this thing, you yeah. can show them, this thing worked like a boss. And then obviously for uh, coming up the center of the bear, this gut hook knife from Groman worked amazing. Pause too. Yeah, if you that go back to our videos, you'll see that the, the line looks surgical. And so we use that for doing the line. And then obviously, like I said, for skinning it out, use the uh, skinning knife from Groman. That's the skinner. That was beautiful. Yeah. So you see this is the skinner. That shape of that knife allows you so as you're coming down that skin you can put that pressure and just slide it. It looks a lot like the, the natives knives I used to see that have the big curl with the handle. This is much along that same principle so that you can go along that skin and work that away. And need barely any pressure which I've found. It's just barely anything. You just slowly chip away at it. And as for the other question with the cookbook, any, I think pretty much everything is going to be in that cookbook. Well, the thing about the cookbook is we're thinking about it in, in, in a number of ways. First of all, we're thinking about how we like to eat it. So yeah. we're carnivores. We, we really <laughs> like, like just put it on a stick, put it over a fire, and eat it. But then we're thinking about how to introduce it to people. Yeah. So being a real uh, wild cook means thinking about, you know, one of the biggest mistakes I made as a chef was uh, early in my career was thinking I was going to give people my food. Yeah. And that's good to a certain extent. But one of the things you have to do, I had to do, is I had to think about what is somebody else going to enjoy. So our cookbook is going to be mostly about getting everybody to enjoy it. Yep. Whether your kids, I mean, you go to serve your kids bear meat, they might look at you and think of teddy bear, right? Yeah. So you got to be, you have to be cognizant of who you're serving. Yep. But it's going to be focused, number one, fewer ingredients, yep. okay? Not too complicated. Not too complicated. Yep. It's going to be focused on strong techniques like yep. we're showing you here today and it's going to be focused on uh, family style food yeah. which is uh, really near and dear to our yeah. heart also yeah. another cool thing is with the cookbook we kind of had a cool idea where it's real for some people it's easy to read a recipe and do it but how cool would it be to say click the picture of the food and the video small video pops up a little two yeah. or five so the video exactly to see us how to cook it yeah and so the, for me that's easier yeah so the instructor bay's absolutely right so especially the e-cookbook the instructional video will be yep. a companion to it. So we'll be able to show you step by step by step. So if you've just joined us, this is Surefire Wednesdays. I want to take a minute to thank Botech, Excalibur, Diamond, and all of the uh, Botech family, yep. uh, the Botech ambassadors, everybody who strengthened the message yep. of hunting and getting outdoors. It's what we're all about. Um, it's the most passionate part of what we do as chefs, is taking something from wild to table. Now, I know yeah, something. Yeah. So I just wanted to mention again that Dan Wallace is going to try and destroy one of these things. But I kind of yeah. wanted to give you a visual, like I said earlier. <laughs> I was walking, but this thing, 
fully on my back, and I went like this. Just slipped right on the Full body rock. onto solid rock, landed on it. Yeah. Scope, limbs, everything. And okay. it's still straight as well. So <laughs> this sauce is getting close. So okay. why don't we come off and let's uh, show everybody at home uh, a nice finished pan. Why don't you get the Parmesan and the, oh my God, this is literally developing so nicely. Looks like we've got about five minutes left here. And I want you to look at how that's coming along. Now, let's talk for one second about the importance of reducing sauces. So remember, I added the liquid. We put the chicken stock in there. Yep. We put the wine in there. Yep. We, there was tomato juice. But one of the most important things is not to rush this step. When you get something cooking and it starts to look fabulous, and you're looking at this and you're saying, man, that looks good. It's a little bit, right now it's still a little bit runny. The way that you do that is you just continue to thicken it. You continue to just reduce it. Now, here's the thing, babe. If you reduce it, and let's say it gets too dry, what do you yeah. add? Water. You just add water. You add water because that's what you got rid of. So you can, or you can add some wine. I mean, like I might add wine. <laughs> But uh, if you don't like wine, by the way, you might not like, we put red wine in there. If you don't like red wine, use white wine. If you don't like wine, period, use beer. The reason we're using alcohol, the reason we're using alcohol is because the, whether it's the brewmaster, the vintner, what they've done is they've taken the time to perfect that, that taste and that palate of that particular alcohol. And what happens when you concentrate it, you just add you yeah. accentuate that flavor. Another good point is if you don't like wine or beer or alcohol because of the alcohol, an important thing is when you cook it, it's actually a good way to enjoy the taste because when you cook it, all the alcohol burns off. So if you don't like alcohol per se, you can still get the beautiful taste of red wine or beer just without the alcohol. So, folks, I would let this reduce a little longer, but I want to show you a finish. So we're going to put this beautiful... Oh, my gosh. Come on, guys. Oh, it smells gorgeous. absolutely fantastic. Look pasta. at this. You, you can see why the Italians call it gravy. Eh? You oh, can yeah. see why they call it gravy. I mean, yeah. that's just, oh my gosh. I just want to keep pouring gravy on there. Okay. We're going to finish it with a little bit of, put it right here, buddy. So what we've got, never buy the, uh, the powdered Parmesan. It's no, mostly. This tastes completely different. Yeah. And uh, most important thing before I do this, one of my favorite tools in the kitchen is called a microplane. It's kind of like a mini, mini cheese grater. And things for like zest and like around Christmas, nutmeg and stuff into your drinks. And most importantly, Parmesan. Parmesan. So a nice firm parm. Oh, yeah. It's like at a restaurant when they're like, when? Just say when. It's like, there is no when. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. Okay, we have just a couple minutes left, and um, I think this makes us very happy. You can see I did that uh, tagliatelle uh, in a, just a nice, simple dish. So whether it's wide or thin, can be spaghetti, can be fresh pasta. Remember, two ingredients, eggs, flour, and you're in business. Yep. Two ingredients, and if you need to bring it together, do it by hand. You can roll it with a rolling pin. That's the way you get connected to the food. When you make food like this and you make it from scratch, you know what's gone into it. You know that it's healthy for you, for your family. And my goodness, if you've had the privilege of harvesting an animal like we did and have the honor of taking a gorgeous black... I couldn't take my hands off the paws. Oh, I know. The it's pads, so cool. so the claws, it's, and it's, it's so humbling. And you know what? You put so much time into getting the bear, into getting all this stuff. Take the time. Take, a, take a Sunday night. <laughs> sit down with your family. You know, Make your own bread. It's not that hard. It's the simplest thing. So we easy. should actually make bread on one of these surefires because it's so easy. Make your own bread earlier in the day. Make your own pasta. Make it ahead of time. Like he said, it's yep. great to let you it sit in the there? fridge. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Here, yeah, yeah bread bread in there. Okay. So I got to wrap this up because we got to throw to Excalibur. If you're watching that live now, don't go anywhere. Excalibur is coming up and they're going to try and destroy the, the new out. micro and they're going to blow. There's going to be, I think there's going to be pyrotechnics. I know there's a helicopter involved <laughs> and we wish them the best. Dan Wallace. Take them, uh, take them to town with the x -Cal. Thank you for watching. That and thank you, Botech family. And as always, from all of us at The Outdoor Chef, from my family, from Bailey, Dakota, and myself, we want to thank you for watching. And keep in mind, MOTV, My Outdoor TV, if you want to see more of The Outdoor Chef, yeah. if you want to see more Fearless Outdoors, go to My Outdoor TV. If you haven't signed up yet, use the promo code Collins. That's our last name. 
promo code Collins, and you'll get a month for 99, 99 cents. cents. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll catch you later. I'm going to leave you with this beautiful dish. Then we're gonna Black bear <laughs> bolognese. Oh, <laughs> nice gravy. Oh, it's good to mop up with the bread. This smells so good. good. You just need butter. On the bread? Yeah. Let's try this.